Today's video is brought to you by Team Group's Extreme ARGB memory. With its unique mirror design and high speeds of up to 4000 MHz, it will undoubtedly make a great addition to your build. To learn more, go to the link in the video description. Previously, we compared the i5-3470 to the FX-8350 in 21 games that released within the last decade, and in that video I briefly talked about why I believe the FX-8370 benchmarks from both Gamers Nexus as well as Hardware Unboxed to be misleading. In today's video, I decided to get a little more in-depth because I believe this is a serious topic that needs to be discussed. Of course, we're going to have a look at a bunch of benchmarks and I have a feeling you're going to find this one interesting. In case you're not aware, both Steves have always claimed AMD FX to be terrible and in their benchmark videos you can see that an overclocked FX8370 doesn't perform any better than modern dual-core CPUs with four threads such as the G4560 and the Athlon 3000G. Now, if you ever tried playing games using CPUs with different core counts, then you're probably aware that games tend to stutter more the less cores you have. And since I tested plenty of different processors by now and saw how much having more cores can improve the fluidity of a game, even if we talk about FX cores, I always had a hard time believing that an 8-core FX processor is incapable of beating a modern 2-core 4-thread CPU. Obviously, I'm not talking about every single game out there. Titles such as Far Cry 5, for example, run perfectly fine on two cores and four threads, but I definitely didn't expect to see an overclocked eight core FX to perform so badly in games such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Division 2, Witcher 3, etc. Because I tested these games plenty of times using different processors, and I'm confident that even at stock, my FX8350 performs better than what is shown in their benchmarks. So, what I decided to do was make my own comparison to prove my point. Since I don't have a modern 2-core 4-thread processor, I had to use my Ryzen 5 1600 AF with four of its cores disabled, which essentially makes it a faster Athlon 3000G that has double the cache. I'm pretty sure that we're also faster than the Pentium G4560 and shouldn't be that far behind the G5500. When it comes to specs, for the Ryzen system we have a B350 PC made motherboard and 16GB of DDR4 3200MHz memory, while for the FX platform we're using a 990FXA UD3 Revision 4 motherboard paired with 16GB of DDR3 1866MHz memory. For the graphics card, we're using an EVGA GTX 1070, and finally, both systems are being powered with a 700 watt FSB Hydro power supply. By the way, in case you're wondering, all of my tests are being done outside the case with only a single 120mm fan blowing air onto the VRMs, and both CPUs have been cooled using the stock heatsinks. Okay, so just before we jump into gaming results, let's have a quick look at Cinebench R15. For the single core score, we see that our modern dual core CPU with four threads takes the lead, beating the FX8350 by a massive 55% margin, while for the multi-core test, the 8-core FX manages to pull ahead by 53%. Looking at gaming results, let's begin with Shadow of the Tomb Raider, where the stock FX processor clearly outperforms our 2-core 4-thread CPU. The FX8350 manages to deliver a higher frame rate and a much smoother experience compared to our dual-core processor that isn't very capable of running the game. As we can see, it refuses to load up most of the NPCs in the third part of the benchmark, which by the way took a very long time to load up. On top of that, it also has a hard time loading up the audio in the second part of the benchmark, which are issues that usually tend to happen on CPUs that are maxing out. Increasing the settings doesn't seem to change the outcome too much other than making graphics look fancier, 
And I have absolutely no idea what Gamers Nexus did to make NFX 8370 with a 4.9 GHz OC and 2133 MHz memory perform the same as the G5500. Also, while at it, I'd like to quickly talk about the Shadow of the Tomb Raider results from Hardware Unboxed, where we see an i5-2500K performing pretty much the same as the FX 8370. The thing is, the FX processor should be performing better, because in my FX 8350 versus i5-3470 comparison, the 8-core FX actually performs a lot better than the i5, and given the 3470 is slightly faster than the 2500K, it is simply impossible for the FX 8370 to not beat the 2nd gen i5 in this game. Next on the list is Division 2, and once again, according to Steve from Gamers Nexus, this game stutters more on an overclocked FX 8370 than it does on the Athlon 3000G. In my case, the game runs perfectly fine on my stock FX 8350, which also has no issues outperforming our dual-core processor when it comes to both frame rate and frame time performance. Aside from terrible stuttering, the 2-core 4-thread CPU also struggles to load objects and textures from time to time, which shouldn't be a surprise since it is almost constantly maxing out. Next up we have GTA 5, which is another game where we see the 4.9GHz FX 8370 not performing any better than the stock Athlon 3000G in the Gamers Nexus video. For some reason, my stock FX 8350 actually performs a bit better than our 2-core 4-thread processor, regardless of which settings we use. Witcher 3 is next, and apparently the G4560 is basically on par with a 4.4GHz FX 8370 in this title, at least according to Hardware Unboxed. I'd like to quickly remind you that our 1600AF with 2 cores and 4 threads enabled should be faster than the G4560. We're also using 3200MHz of RAM instead of 2400MHz that Steve used in his comparison, but despite all of that, our dual-core processor is still way behind the stock FX 8350, regardless of how intensive the area is and which graphics settings are being used. The dual-core also tends to struggle from time to time, so I highly doubt that a G4560 is capable of delivering similar performance as a 4.4GHz FX 8370. Since I currently don't have Battlefield 1 installed, which is another game where a G4560 performs similarly to an overclocked 8-core FX, according to Steve from Hardware Unboxed, I decided to test Battlefield 4 instead. Using lowest settings, both CPUs seem to deliver an identical experience, though once we get in an intensive situation, the FX processor does perform better thanks to a higher frame rate, as well as a more consistent frame time. Using ultra settings, we can see that our dual-core CPU begins to struggle, while the game runs silky smooth on the stock FX 8350, so once again I refuse to believe that in Battlefield 1, which is a more CPU demanding game, the G4560 can be on par with an overclocked FX 8370. Results are pretty much identical in a lot of other modern games. Call of Duty Warzone, for example, still runs pretty good on a stock FX 8350, while on the dual-core CPU it feels choppy and tends to freeze from time to time. 
We can observe a similar behavior in Apex Legends. It just runs significantly better on the FX 8350. By the way, I don't know if you noticed, but out of all games we tested until now, there is not a single situation where the FX8350 has had a worse frame time, even with the massive single core and memory disadvantages, and the reason for that is simply because it has extra cores at its disposal. Also, it is important to note that the FX processor never maxes out in most games, leaving you extra headroom to multitask or talk to your friends on Discord without having communication issues. Battlefield 5 is a game that I honestly didn't expect to see a modern dual-core CPU with hyper-threading to perform this good, though the FX8350 still delivers around 10-20% more frames most of the time and doesn't stutter as much, which is especially noticeable when playing multiplayer. I expected to see our dual-core processor to easily beat the stock FX8350 in Need for Speed 2015, but it turns out both CPUs perform identically. The FX processor even manages to perform a bit better as we gain speed. At this point, I probably don't need to tell you that single-core means nothing if you don't have enough cores to back it up. There are so many people who praise single core and refuse to believe that having more cores, even with a single core disadvantage of 30 to 40 percent, is actually more beneficial. And if you're one of them, I hope this video changes your mind. Rainbow Six Siege runs basically the same on both processors, and even with ultra settings, they're pushing well above 150 frames most of the time. Far Cry 5 and PUBG are the only couple of games I have on this list that run better on our 2-core 4-thread CPU than they do on the 8-core FX, so unless you prefer to play games like these, upgrading from an 8-core FX to a dual-core CPU with 4 threads would actually be a downgrade, at least in terms of performance, which is probably what most of you care about. So there you have it. This is how a stock FX8350 performs compared to a modern dual-core CPU with four threads, such as the Athlon 3000G or Pentium G5500. Once again, I have absolutely no idea what's going on with AMD FX benchmarks from both Gamers Nexus and Hardware Unboxed. What you saw today is exactly how an 8-core FX processor should be performing, and I stand behind my words. I'm confident that anybody with a similar setup should be getting identical performance, and if you'd like to test things out yourself, I have left all the necessary information about the parts, drivers, etc. in the description down below. Honestly, I always felt like there is an unnecessary amount of hate surrounding AMD FX. I made plenty of videos myself over the past couple of years, comparing FX to Phenom, Ryzen, and Intel CPUs, and never have I thought, oh wow, AMD FX is indeed crap. On the contrary, I'm legitimately surprised at how capable both the FX6300 and 8350 are, even when compared to their rivals and predecessors. Now, I'm not claiming that FX CPUs are great, but I don't consider them to be trash either, and I believe that they were definitely worth considering depending on your use case. Either way, if you found this video interesting, you know what to do, and feel free to support my work by using Amazon affiliate links provided in the description down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.